Howdy again everyone, and here we go with a test of the third available Canon RFS lens, the new 55-210mm f5-7.1 IS STM. RFS lenses are lenses for Canon's new RF mount mirrorless cameras, but which only offer a smaller APS-C image circle, just right for Canon's APS-C RF mount cameras, like the R7, R10 and R50. They can be smaller, lighter and cheaper. This one is your standard telephoto zoom lens, covering the full frame equivalent of 88 to 336 mm. Not a bad little zoom range for such a small lens, although the maximum aperture of only f5 on a wide end, darkening to well a very dark f7.1 as you zoom in, means the lens doesn't capture much light or offer very out of focus backgrounds. This is clearly a lens intended for casual telephoto photography, to throw in your camera bag for a trip to the wildlife park, although actually if it's sharp enough, it could still be really useful for quite a number of projects. It costs a low $350 in the US and a more expensive £430 in the UK, although it's cheaper if you buy it with a new camera as part of a kit. I'd like to thank Canon UK for loaning me this lens for a week or so for testing, although as usual this is a totally independent review. The lens itself is small, light and dead simple and easy to use, mostly made of plastic even down to the lens mount unfortunately which is not weather sealed, basic stuff, but at least a glass protector at the rear will stop dust and moisture ingress from there. On this new copy of the lens, the plastic zoom ring turned really nice and smoothly, with very little stickiness. The plastic control ring on the front, with its helpful knurled texture, can be used to control manual focus or can be configured in your camera's menu for fast access to settings that include aperture, ISO and exposure compensation. Note that it turns smoothly without any clicks. When using it to control manual focus, it works fantastically responsively as you can see here. You can also see that the lens doesn't really suffer from much focus breathing, keeping your focal length the same as you change focus. Oh yes, I forgot to mention that this lens has image stabilisation. Here's some footage with that stabilisation turned off and now turned on. As you can see, it's helping a lot although your footage does remain a little jittery. Let's check out this lens's autofocus. Wow, it works silently, accurately and almost instantaneously and has no trouble tracking subjects when used with a decent camera. That is an excellent performance for a low budget lens. The lens has a very small filter thread size of 55mm and it doesn't come with a hood. Overall, it's basic build quality here but actually manufactured to pretty tight tolerances, being small and light with well functioning electronics. Ok, let's look at image quality now, I'll be testing this thing on the challenging playground of my Canon EOS R7 camera with its APS-C sized 325 megapixel sensor. In camera corrections are turned on for this test. At 55mm and f5, the lens is lovely and sharp in the middle of your images with good contrast and the corner image quality is almost as good, nice. Stopping down to f8 doesn't really help here as the effects of diffraction will have a softening counteraction against any improvement in sharpness. As you might imagine f11 and f16 start getting really soft, diffraction is a bigger issue on a high resolution APS-C camera. Let's zoom in to 100mm where the maximum aperture has already darkened to f6.3. Here sharpness in the middle is just good, it'll look fine on a 24 megapixel camera but a 32.5 megapixel one is just pushing things here. Thankfully though, corner image quality is no worse. Stop down to f8 and the corners look the same, but the middle enjoys a nice little increase in sharpness, looking a bit punchier now. Finally, let's zoom all the way into 210mm. The good news here is that the lens stays quite sharp, even at its brightest aperture of f7.1, and contrast is ok too. The corner image quality, again, is a bit softer here, but still perfectly usable. Stopping down to f8 or f11 sees no real improvement anywhere across the image frame. Overall, this performance is a little better than I expected really, considering how brutally tough a 32.5 megapixel sensor really is, I'd say the lens survived my testing mostly intact and I reckon owners of 24 megapixel cameras will be really quite impressed with it. 
Let's turn off those in-camera corrections now and take a look at distortion and vignetting. At 55mm and f5, we get moderately strong pincushion distortion and fairly dark image corners. Stop down to f8 and those corners brighten up. If we zoom all the way into 210mm, you can see that pincushion distortion is an issue across the entire zoom range, and at f7.1, vignetting is there again. You have to stop down to f11 to see those corners fully brighten up, so it's a pretty mediocre performance there. Leave your in-camera corrections turned on, definitely. This lens has a handy trick up its sleeve, an impressive minimum focus distance of about 70cm in my tests anyway, bringing you super close to smaller subjects. At f7.1, the close-up image quality is a bit ghostly, but stop down just a little bit to f8 for a nice little improvement in contrast, good to know. Let's see how well this lens works against bright light. Some further good news here, flaring doesn't really seem to be an issue here at all, with the lens maintaining its contrast very nicely, whether you're zoomed out or zoomed in. Finally, bokeh. As I mentioned already, that dark maximum aperture combined with a smaller APS-C image circle makes it a little tricky to actually get out of focus backgrounds here. When you do get them, they look totally fine, quite nice and smooth, actually. Overall, I would call this camera lens very proficient, but a little grey. It works very well, and it's decently sharp with decent contrast, but it's not terribly exciting because of that dark maximum aperture, and also, I'd have preferred to have a physically bigger lens that could zoom in a bit further. But ultimately, it does what it does very nicely. It's good value when bought alongside a camera, so it does come recommended. Thanks for watching everyone, and a special thanks to all my supporters over on Patreon. If you find these videos helpful, then check out my Patreon page, where you can find all kinds of bonus content, as well as early access to reviews and other videos. Ciao for now, everyone.